What's wrong, Bear? Bear's tied on. Hi, buddy. Covering from her injury. Here, Satyl. See you, buddy. Fell to the brim. Look at the boys. Bear's pissed. So, this evening will be a quick note. Uh, I just strapped Heather and her husky beer off at the highway, and myself and Saku were headed back into the woods last night. The four of us, as a little family gathering, went and stayed in the canvas tent that I have. It's basically a hot tent with a wood stove. And uh, I'm gonna bring you back in here this evening. I'm staying in for another night. So we came in, we had a relaxing evening, and uh, there was no need to record that one. Uh, we enjoyed ourselves, and for me, uh, you know, we're both of us really, we've had hectic starts to the new year, and it's nice to get out, get my tent set up, and uh, I just basically don't want to do a whole lot this evening. We're pretty uneventful. It's just going to be uh, a relaxing night in the camp. We're out here in an undisclosed location in central Newfoundland. And right now, there's not a whole lot of snow. I came in yesterday over this with near uh, 120 pounds of gear between two of us. Uh, that was a tent. And of course, we had a bunch of luxury items and food and some drinks and uh, the stove and everything else. And overnight, it was mild. We got a little bit of, a little bit of rain, some mild temperatures. And now the snow is just about gone. It's been a funny winter here in Newfoundland. Uh, well, where I've been anyways, on the East Coast and here in Central, there's been snow, then it's got mild, and we've had rain, and then the snow came again. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't seem to want to make her mind up. But uh, this is it, me and Sakura were going in. I'm gonna give you a little tour and uh, just kind of show you how I like to spend the night in the canvas camp. So I'm gonna use this sled, fill it up with wood, uh, it's a brand new sled I just got the other day, uh, a Pelican, Pelican Trek 60 it's called, and uh, it's a nice deep sled, it pulls well and it can take a, a fair amount of gear, and uh, I figured I'd pick it up, I have another one I use as well, but it's always nice to have two. So, around my campsite this evening, there's not a whole lot of dead wood, and with the little tin stove I have in my canvas camp, uh, they only really burn dead and dry sticks. It won't burn the green stuff. You can't really get your stove hot enough and uh, the fire ends up going out. So on the way back, I'm gonna gather a few sticks of wood, like that one there. And as you can see in the background, there's a couple of them kicking around. Uh, there's one over there. And I'm gonna try to fill my sled so I'll, I'll have a good stash of wood for this evening. Saku's out roaming around now, where is he? Heel sack, let's go, come on. Here he comes. Come on, sack. He's in bushwhacking, like always. Heel sack, let's go, come on. Good boy. Come here. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Stay close now, stay close. So you can probably hear cars uh, right now. I'm not that far from the highway. Maybe a kilometer, if that. And I have another kilometer or so to get to where the campsite is on the side of a small pond. So you'll hear some cars in the background, but that's it. Sometimes you can't get in as deep as you want. It's just nice even to get off the side of the road and uh, have a little getaway. It's actually a, a major highway that runs out here. And there'll be cars for most of the evening, but when the night comes around, uh, the traffic dies down. And I like that. Come on, Zach. When you're cutting a tree like this, uh, that's been dead for a while, they have this thing on the top, what they call a widow maker. And basically, is the top of the tree is so dead that when you start cutting it, 
uh, it can fall off and after that hit you in the head. And a long time ago, lumberjacks, uh, you know, all over the world would be out and cutting down wood like this. What would happen? Much bigger trees, they'd be cutting, top would fall off, hit them in the head, and it would leave their poor old wife as a widow. So they call them widow makers. So, as you can see, I'm going to try to knock this widow maker off before I cut the tree down. It was a pretty weak one. And this tree is pretty weak. I can almost just crack it off by pushing on it. So I got a few sticks in the toboggan back there. It's a good start. A few more wouldn't hurt though. So some people are going to ask why I took the gun with me. And I just do that for protection, more or less. Uh, there's quite a few coyotes here in Newfoundland. and. Uh, you know, to be in here with Saku off the leash, to me, uh, I feel a little more at ease having a gun with me in case anything will go wrong. But uh, whether that be firing a few warning shots or whatever needs to be done. The other reason, probably the main reason, would be to get a rabbit. Uh, there's lots of rabbits in around, and uh, I've snared a couple this year in a different area. I don't have uh, snares out at the moment. But in around here, I've seen lots of tracks. Yesterday, when we came in, it was around minus 20. So a big swing in temperatures before it got warm overnight. But I was hoping to see one on the way in. But I had no luck, so. There she is, in all her glory. It's the pond we are on last night. Small little pond. And that was a perfect sheet yesterday evening. Now there's a bit of water built up on top. It's safe. There's probably eight inches of ice, a little more than that. I drilled a few holes with the auger, and for me, that was a good source of water for us, other than having to cut eight inches through ice with an axe and make my axe dull. Unfortunately, I couldn't use those holes to ice fish, as that's not open for another week. But it uh, looks like it could be a promising pond. And I can't wait to come back and try it out. Uh, maybe I'll be able to share that journey when the time comes. But we're coming down to camp. And, uh... Can't beat it. There's lots of sign of beaver in this area. There's three dams that I found on this pond. That's clearly a little log they were chewing on. It wasn't yesterday though. I'd say that beaver's long gone. But it's signed, so definitely going to boil the water this evening, and uh, that's what we did yesterday and this morning as well, because you don't want that old beaver fever. Oh, I'm caught up in something. Looks like I lost a few logs. <laughs> oh my, that's it. It's life in the woods. There she is, home sweet home. Chimney still uh, piping a bit of smoke out of her. I left a few sticks in the inner when I left. I got a dirty old town beer waiting for me, a nice cold brew for later. Drank the other ones last night. <laughs> me and uh, me and Heather had ourselves a nice enjoyable Saturday night. So uh, this is the camp. And as I said, this is not going to be too intricate of a video. Just going to show you how it's done and uh, let you know what my canvas tent setup looks like. So this one in particular has no tent poles. So I had to cut five sticks. One stick there, her log. Another one on this side. That makes a bipod. Then I have a main ridge stick going across the top. 
and on the back I have another bipod. Uh, on the sides are ropes and that's basically what supports the tent. So I used most all of them. I left one here so I can walk around the tent. I have a little trail there. And they're all tied on the top. Over here most of them are tied as well except for one. And it's good if you pick a site with this camp to have a lot of surrounding trees. If not you're going to have to peg them down or put your own sticks in the snow. And this is the chimney. I made a little bipod to support the weight of the stove pipe as it comes out to the tent. There's a bit of an asbestos covering here. That prevents the tent from burning uh, when it touches the hot pipe, which is not that hot right now. My saw hung up. This is my box saw. Collapsible box saw for cutting the big junks. So without further ado, uh, let's take a look in the old estate. Show you what I'm talking about here. So, this is it. Representing the Habs, Montreal Canadiens up there. That's my only blanket for the night. It gets pretty warm in here. Uh, you don't need much more than that. Well, I don't anyways. Uh, these are some logs I got left over and some smaller sticks, enough for, uh, oh, I would say two hours of burning, max. And of course, my light, nice, lovely bed of spruce boughs, and it smells absolutely amazing in here. What a smell of spruce, and uh, that's probably a four or five inch bed, and uh, it took us a while to harvest those boughs, uh, but that's the traditional way to put a floor in these types of tents. Underneath is snow. And uh, that's a mat that Heather used, and it's the one I usually use when I'm doing my cold camping, or camping in a normal tent. Uh, but I kept it along for the evening, and uh, you know, it helps. Gives you a little more comfort, but personally, I don't mind just sleeping on the boughs itself. A little clothesline up top uh, to dry out items. It gets really warm at the top of these tents, of course, that's where the heat uh, makes its way up to. All my goods, got some bacon and eggs for breakfast tomorrow, can of beans over there, uh, and I got some capelin and potatoes for tonight I think, I think that's it. These logs around the edges, what it is, is if I move that, this can lift right up, like this. So these little pieces here, uh, you can do numerous things, I think some people fold them out the other way and put snow on them. And uh, if there's enough snow, there's not a whole lot right now, obviously. And that will keep it down to the ground and prevent any heat loss. Uh, what I usually do is I use some logs. And these are parts of the trees. I don't really like cutting green trees. But for these main poles, I find green live trees are the best for support. So uh, the remaining pieces I didn't use, I put them along the edges to hold down the sides of my camp. And over here I got a little piece of metal. Uh, not quite sure where I got that, but I was using that yesterday. It was the first time since I've used this tent. I think this is my seventh night last night sleeping in it since I got it a few years ago. And I haven't used this before, but I put it in and I was thinking maybe it's reflecting a bit of heat back at us. So it worked out okay, I suppose. And right now, fire is all but gone so I gotta give it a little breath of wind and uh, a couple more sticks to get that going I put a few sticks in and uh, got the fire back to life now it's a raging blaze This gets extremely hot, especially the handle. So I always use a stick to close the uh, the vent here, the damper, and to control the handle as well. Get in there. We got a visitor. Hey, bud, what you doing? Come lie down. Hey, buddy. We've done a lot of going today, haven't we, Shaq? We've been on the go. 
Yes, we have. Sack so probably lie down for a nap now. Or are you going to follow me and get some wood? <laughs> so now you're up in the canvas tent is usually a night of luxury. Uh, you're pulling things in by sled. So we had numerous, uh, we had some cans of beer, we had some wine, we had a bunch of food items. Uh, weight wasn't an issue. So uh, that's, that's a little different than cold camping when you got to be somewhat, uh, you know, frugal on what you bring with you. Uh, on a trip like this, with the canvas tent, you can you can take pretty much whatever your heart desires or whatever you want to pull on the sled if you're doing it uh, in a winter event. So, anyways, I want to go gather up some wood. Body lock. Keep it with the saw. Look out. Whammo! So I, uh, I got all that wood that I gathered cut up. Uh, there's a few more junks I already had laid in the tent. And I'll take a little break now. And I just want to talk about the name of the tent. Uh, Terry's Tents and where I got that in Goose Bay, Labrador. Uh, I got it up there. It's been almost three years now. And uh, it's been a great, great purchase. Uh, it's a very sturdy tent. It's an 8x10, so canvas material. It's a fairly, fairly big size tent. Uh, not really one I'd want to carry around solo. Uh, a, I guess, for the size of it, and B, because I had to cut down all these logs every time I'd set it up. But, uh, of course, uh, years ago, old trappers and, uh, and other people who would roam the woods would carry something around like that. But what they would normally do would be to keep the tent poles and carry them from site to site and that way they wouldn't have to continually cut down five more new ones. But uh, no, Terry makes a good tent and uh, I recommend it if you want to get into this type of uh, this type of camping. It's very enjoyable and as I said it's uh, more luxurious especially in the winter uh, versus going out in a coal tent or a lean-to or however else you want to do it. So a choice you get to make uh, if you go with Terry's tents is to determine the height of your walls and what I mean is from the point where it goes to your peak uh, down to the ground so from here to here and on my tent I went with four foot walls uh, I do believe you get the option of three feet or even going higher up to five and I guess the different benefits of having different wall heights is if you had a higher wall it'd be better for maybe taller people or for actually standing up inside the tent although I can pretty much do that in this one and uh, if you want to put chairs in here but the only downfall of having a bigger tent is you have a much bigger area to heat up and uh, again traditionally they go with three foot walls a much smaller space to heat up you need less wood for your fire and it will get a lot warmer especially in really cold temperatures where these tents are made for I mean today uh, I guess yesterday it went to minus 15 but today at plus 4 degrees it's not great conditions to be in this tent I don't even get barely have the stove going now uh, just briefly just enough to, to keep a flame another thing I wanted to mention there just about my bipod is that I got this tied in with paracord and it's also holding this main ridge pole in as well and yeah I put that there that's how it kind of keeps it all in place. So, you know, these wooden poles is one way you can hot tent. Some of the ones they make today also come with just bigger sized tent poles. So you take your poles in with you, you don't have to cut them down. But to me, this is a much more vintage look and uh, I appreciate the old school style of cutting your poles and uh, stringing your tent up on those. So it's pretty nice. But so that's enough of me babbling on for now about setting up the tent and gathering the wood and all that stuff uh, you've heard enough of it but for now we're going to take a load off because that's what we came out here to do Saku's already sawed off on the side of me in another hour or two I'll need to get a few more sticks uh, to get us through the evening so for now we'll catch you on the flip side
So as you can see, or I don't know if you can tell on the GoPro, uh, I should have my good camera going. I got zoom, but I'm just a bit lazy. But uh, as you can tell, there's not a whole lot of dead standing wood on this pond. It's mostly spruce that are green, uh, green birch and green juniper. But I managed to gather a couple in the sled and uh, I'm headed back to camp for the evening. The ice is super wet. There's uh, an inch or two of water on the top of it. That's just from uh, all the snow that's melted last night, this morning, yesterday evening. There's around an inch of snow on top of the pond here. So, but it's perfectly safe to walk on. So, on the way back to camp, right in the distance, if you can see it. Cheers. She's belting out the heat now, buddy. Temperatures after going down, uh, probably four or five degrees. It's just below freezing. So it's gonna be a nice night. Uh, we're sitting back, gonna eat supper eventually, but uh, won't be too much more going on this evening. Zach was looking up the leftover potatoes and uh, he had a supper around half an hour ago, some kibble. So this is a little dessert for him. The fire's still going and we're tucked away here for the evening. Beauty night at camp. So over the last 24 hours there was a little change in plans. I had came back in for the second night here at my site and uh, it was my first time out the year and one night just wasn't enough. So as I came back in for my second, uh, today was actually a Monday, and uh, by degree I'm a teacher, I'm substituting at the moment, and I had no day penciled in for Monday today, so I figured I would stay out last night, and if I got a call uh, within you know a, a decent time frame, I would have left here, went home, got my wash, and went into school. And that's exactly what happened. I, uh, I got a job yesterday evening and I left here this morning, I think it was just after 5.30, I got up, I was left by quarter after 6, it was a 20 minute walk out, roughly uh, another close on 30 minutes to my house, and then I had to drive 30 minutes to the school. So it's been a long day, school is over, and now I came back and I got to take everything down. Uh, I'm not going to make nothing too fancy here, but I will put a time lapse on and you can watch as I uh, break the tent down put it on the sled, carry it back out to the road, and uh, I'll make my way home. So, the tent's down, the sled's loaded, and uh, we're ready to hit the road. A couple things I got done uh, before I leave is I took all the boughs, uh, minus the ones that kind of died in this corner, that's where the stove was. The rest of them I took them and I piled them up over there under the trees deeper in the woods. Uh, I, I want to use those when I come back in in maybe a couple weeks time. Uh, I got some stuff I need to do so I may not get back out. But when I do, some of those will be ready to use and uh, hopefully not too snow covered. That beat's going down and, and cutting more live boughs which you never want to do. Uh, also, I got some poles that were used on the floor. These poles here held down my walls all around, and I'll stash those, and also use them again next time. And the A-frame itself will stay up. That won't be harmed by the storm. I'll be able to come back in, beat down all the snow with my snowshoes, and put the tent right back up uh, tomorrow. The reason why I'm doing all this is because there is a big, dirty storm coming, around 30 centimeters. And uh, I don't want to damage my tent 
I don't want any rips, tears by uh, it hooking into branches or a tree falling on it. So that's part of the reason why I came in and uh, took it down this evening. So, just gonna mosey on out now. Uh, got a quick little fire going, I'm gonna boil the kettle, and uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you liked the video, uh, hit the thumbs up below, and please subscribe to my channel. Take care.